Coming at you from the AO Studios, it's the Fade Route with D and Z. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Powered by Riverside FM. Coming at you live from the AO studio. It's the Fade Route with DNZ. And we've got a great show for you tonight. We're talking lots of NBA news. The NHL free agency opens up. But we'll begin today's show with the NBA draft, which took place last week. And I can't tell you who the first pick was. I can't tell you who the first five picks were. However, I can tell you that Lakers took Ronnie James with the number 55 pick overall in the second round. They also offered him a four-year contract today. Z, the Lakers say Bronny earned his selection in the draft. Z, did Bronny earn it or is this nepotism at its finest? So according to NBC Los Angeles, Bronny's first NBA deal, right? Rookie contract, 55 overall pick. Out of 60, right? There's 60 picks in this tier draft. He's number 55. So there were 54 other players taken ahead of him. I just want to put proper context in. His contract, which normally is in the six hundred to seven hundred thousand dollar range for people at that particular draft slot. Bronny's going to be making a report at seven point nine million dollars. Because he needs, according it. to sport, or according to Spot Track, five point four of that will be guaranteed with a four-year team option. I'm sorry. Was this not the same Bronny James who averaged 3.4 points per game in college? Is this the same guy? Is, is, am I missing something? Am I living in an alternate... Oh, excuse me, I was wrong. I shortchanged him. He's the guy who averaged 4.8 points, not 3.4. I, I shortchanged you, Bronny. I'm so sorry. My apologies. I didn't mean to. When you're averaging a triple single, he's he's doing a 5-3-2. There you go, a 5-3-2. That, that's what he's, and that's not a double play. Those clutch. are his stat lines. Point clutch. Clutch, complete, and clutch is everything in life. He's Absolutely, 5-3-2. Five, he's five, three, two. And 36%, 36.6 from the field. 67% from the three, from uh, the free throw, 27% from three. I don't see he, anything that he does particularly well, but that is going to get you $7.9 million in today's NBA. And the only thing, the only reason I can fathom is that he is the son of Mr. LeBron James. That stat line does not warrant $7.9 million, does not warrant a team option in the fourth year, does not warrant does not warrant $5.4 million guaranteed. Right? We said it last week. Would LeBron go about get hooking his kid up? Right? Where would the would the Lakers hook LeBron's kid up as a thank you? And it looks like we were right on the money with that. They paid him first round money for almost undrafted status. I can't wrap my mind around it. Can you make sense of it? Because I can't. All right. So, you know, I've gone back and forth with this thing since the draft. I I have to admit, in the beginning, I was very angry. And I was saying, you know, this is going to forever be... I was like, the Lakers will never win another title. This is going to be the curse of Bronny James because of what LeBron James did here. 
And then I thought about it a little bit more, and I was like, okay, well, when I was in high school and I got to college, my mother got me my first job. Now, granted, it wasn't playing point guard in the NBA, but it was working at her nursing home because she worked as a finance director for the nursing home. Now, if I applied for the position, could I have gotten it myself? Probably, but she helped me get my first job, right? And in this situation, the only defense I could come up with is that LeBronny James always wanted to play in the NBA. His dad plays in the NBA. He wants to play in the NBA. Okay. Bronny's now going to go on some workouts because, you know, that's what people coming into the draft do. And it's clear that Bronny is not an NBA caliber player. And it's clear that nobody is going to draft Bronny James. So, what do we do? This is what we do. The Lakers draft him so he could play with his dad. His dad has a two-year deal. Bronny has a two-year deal, has a four-year deal, but he's likely not going to play past that. And what's really going to happen here is that he's not going to play. He's going to get DNPs. And that's going to be the story. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as mad about it as I was before. The only thing I'll say is, this is the only gripe I have. He didn't have to be drafted. He could have went undrafted and then signed a contract to play with the Lakers. That's my only beef in this matter. It's like you took a draft spot away from a guy who might have been able to contribute more than you could. More. Somebody who averaged more than a triple single in college. The Lakers could have drafted that player. And then Bronny would have went undrafted, which is fine. And then you could have signed a deal to be on the Lakers. And I don't see the problem in that. The other part that I am grappling with is, Bronny, are you that bad? That you didn't think that if I stayed in college, I could have got better. Or if I went overseas, like his agent threatened, said if any other team tried to draft him, he was going to go play in Australia. You're telling me that if you went overseas, you wouldn't have gotten better? Are you really just punting on your basketball career just so you could play with your dad? That's the only question I have in this. But I'm not mad about it anymore. I kind of get it. But I think there was a better way to go about it. I agree. There's, I mean, if you look at this roster, and they're going to improve it, right? Like, this is what they're going to do. They brought it, they drafted Dalton Connect, right? We, we were very happy with his performance. We were linking him to the, we were linking him to the Spurs. We, we, we like Dalton Connect as a player. But the Lakers do too. But you bring him in, you still have Austin Reeves, you still have Cam Reddish, D'Lo is still there, you know, you have Hashimura, you have your your guys. Yeah, there's no playing time for him. So he's going to fill out the G League roster. So $5.4 million, guaranteed $7.9 million for a G League player. I'm, I'm, you know, like, it just doesn't compute, man. It just doesn't compute. And maybe, and maybe ultimately that becomes LeBron's money anyway. And maybe that's what that's about. Maybe that's what that's about. But, you know, in the second round, recently you've been able to find gems, but traditionally you don't. Traditionally, there's a less than 3% chance that these players right. actually amount to anything. So did you really miss on anything? No. Is it ceremonial? Sure. Is it historical? Yes. Like, I'm not overly mad about it. I just think that there are players that earned the chance to get drafted. And I don't think Bronny earned his chance to get drafted by the Lakers. I think he certainly earned a spot on the team, a, a workout to see where that would land. But I have to question I have to question him because 
if it was I, I don't know I can't even say if it was me but I would I would think that I would want to be I'd want to stay in college I'd want to become a better player and hopefully have a career like an Austin Rivers did um, like other other players uh, kids did like I would have had a, a, be- a better shot and now forever being linked to my dad got me drafted. I'm playing because my dad's on the team. Like, you know, and and are you and how's that going to how's that going to work in the locker room? How's that dynamic going to work? You know, this isn't you know, this is a different atmosphere, right? Because when the Griffies played together, right? Griffey Jr. was up and coming and going to be a bigger star than his dad, right? So Barry Bonds came in. He was going to be better than his dad. This is not that situation. I would argue that Austin Rivers is a better basketball player than Doc Rivers, and I don't like either of them. So that's Steph the, Curry was better than Del Curry. Steph Curry's better than Del Curry. Clay Thompson, I think could, you could say he's a better player than his dad, right? I think so. Yeah, okay. Like so, that's that's my only thing. Is like we'll never know. We'll never know. Only time will tell. I doubt he lasts the four years. I, I, I would imagine a lot of DNPs, um, and it's it's. I think it's. I think it's going to be tough because I think a lot of players are going to give him a hard time when he does play. Now, also, uh, he is becoming a media kind of. He's becoming a, a media lightning rod too because you have guys like Stephen A. Smith and you have guys like Jason William J. Williams on TV talking about how this is good for the NBA. Like, this is how you, like, breed somehow, like, generational, like, success. You know, because we see it in other facets of society, and now this is good. Now, of course, there are, like, racial connotations to everything, and the idea of nepotism, and what, you know, you have other people arguing that from a talent standpoint, it's not a good thing. Right? So you have a pretty divided line here, and everything is very clearly drawn in the sand. And I don't know if that's necessarily what Bronny signed up for. I don't know if this is exactly what he uh, was hoping to do. I- I'm hoping, he, I- I'd like to think he was just signing on to play basketball, not being like uh, the poster child for nepotism, whether it's a good or a bad thing. But like I gotta say, like I'm not with Stephen A. Smith on. If he was that good, he would have made it. And you know what? It- it's hard to say that if Ronnie bet on himself, he'd get a better contract than what he got, because. He, got, he probably got a better contract than Dalton Connect, who was taken 17th in the first round. So, yeah. yeah. So. Like, and like I said, it, the only defense I have, the only defense I have, and we'll never know, is that he really took the temperature on himself. He took the temperature on his game. It was like, all right. I couldn't play at USC. I'm averaging triple single. I am not going to be a college. I am not going to be an elite college basketball player. I am not going to make it in the NBA, and I'm not going to get drafted in the NBA. But what I would like to do is I would like to play with my dad for two years. Mm -hmm. If that's what this is about, I can't get mad at that. I can't. But if, if if you thought this was a segue... So that you can have a prominent career in the NBA or become a better basketball player, dude, you missed it. But one of the teams feeling good after the draft, and I know you're feeling good, were the New York Knicks. Whoever who were able to successfully trade for Mikhail Bridges. But they failed to keep Isaiah Hardenstein, who is going to go to the loaded thunder. <laughs> For almost 30 mil a year. Should the Knicks feel optimistic? Or do they suddenly have a big man problem? They can feel optimistic. And they can feel like they have a big man problem. It's not It's not something that's mutually exclusive. When you're looking at Isaiah Hartenstein. Is he a 30 mil a year player? I, I give kudos to him. But another guy. Averaged a triple single last year. 7.8 points, 8.3 rebounds, 2.5 assists. Yes, he brought 
toughness. Yes, he brought rebounds. Yes, he brought size and grit, right? But career, six points, 5.6 rebounds, 1.7 assists. The numbers don't lie, right? So is that a, in your opinion, is that a $30 million a year player? Yes, the market dictates what the market dictates. But if you're the GM, are you, or if you're the GM of the Knicks, are you paying Isaiah Hartenstein for that body of work? 30 mil a year? Well, to be honest with you, to, to the Knicks defense, I don't think they could. I think there was some clauses or some NBA rules that wouldn't allow them to pay him as much as the Thunder did. Um, but if I, if you're asking me if I think Isaiah Hardenstein is worth 30 mil, yeah. Did you see the contract that Isaiah quickly signed? <laughs> Emmanuel quickly, yeah. Did, did you see I, that contract? Quickly, yeah. Did you see the contract that OG Anobi signed? Yeah. I think Harden signs better than both those guys. And I think the Thunder are fucking loaded. I think it was a great move by Presti. Their team is going to be a fucking problem next year. A problem. You can you could pencil them in for the Western Conference Finals. You hope so, because otherwise they're going to get smacked down by the Wolves again, because the Wolves have two. Remember, the Wolves have two. They're going to have Chet Holmgren and Hardenstein at their four and five. Mm-hmm. And you're going to imagine Shea Gilgis, Alexander's going to be better. I would assume that, you know, other players step up. They're, they're going to be really you hope good. So. You absolutely hope so. Now, they're taking the right steps. 30 mil for a center that's averaging a triple single. That's a little rich for my blood. What else is a rich? Is what it's his presence, though, blood. Z. It's his, it's his presence, though, Z. Think about what he did when Mitch Robinson went down and, and how effective he was for the Knicks. Think about that. He really made a difference. He really took steps in the right directions. Look at him as a defender. You know, forget about the scoring, which he does pretty well, but his presence in the middle, he wasn't no, he wasn't soft. He gave Embiid a problem. He gave everybody he played against a problem. This team in general is still not soft. They're, they're not, they're softer, but they are not soft by any means. This means more time in the paint. There, there's more time for pressure, pressure to chew up. You have, hopefully you have Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson is a problem from the standpoint of health. If you can get Mitchell Robinson on the court, then fine. You can, Isaiah Hartenstein, you can kind of let that go. Right, you pair Mitchell Robinson and Jericho Sims, you can kind of build him in the aggregate. <laughs> now, right. the, that's the problem, though. It's the health of Mitchell Robinson. You're banking on the fact that this dude is going to stay healthy, and that's a big gamble. That's a major gamble for the Knicks. The other major gamble that the Knicks did. Now, Mikael Bridges is a given. He's a three and D guy. He's one of the better three and D guys in the league. W- would you argue that? I would say he's one of the better, one of the better three and D players. They gave. Uh, I mean, could finish your point. And I'll talk. We'll t- I'll talk about Mikael Bridges. Separately. He's not worth five first round picks, an unprotected pick swap, and a second round pick. Nobody is. Jesus Christ is not worth five unprotected, five, a four protected for a four unprotected first round pick, another top four protected. An unprotected pick swap in the second round. That's very rich. That's very rich. You're mortgaging your future. Now, that being said, it is every other year. So, next year, you keep 26. You lose 27. The swap is in 28. You lose 29. You keep 30. So, every other year, you're keeping your first round pick. That's the one saving grace of this trade. Because if you did four in a row, like, not completely not. The one saving grace is that you were able to do that. And you kept OG Ananobi, who is a good defensive player. You kept your identity together. You have this group of Villanova cats. And I think that they're, they need more big man depth. Because it is a very, it's a big gamble with Mitchell Robinson and Jericho Sims being your only big. Now, they did draft. Uh, for 40, I believe, 
6'11", 246. They drafted him late in the draft. So maybe you're hoping that you're hoping on that. But uh, at the same time, like, it's both. It's absolutely, it, it can absolutely be both. The Knicks will be better. They will be absolutely better. Bridges makes them better. Health will make them better. But that center position definitely should work. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm with you on this. I don't think Mikhail Bridges is worth all that. But the Nets saw an opportunity and they took it. They knew the Knicks wanted him and they were going to give heaven and earth for him. And I think he's a good player. I worry about him because he doesn't miss games. And Tibbs has this thing where he runs the players into the ground. You're going to run yeah. this guy into the ground. He plays. He plays. He doesn't come off the court. He doesn't miss games. He plays every day. And this is the kind of player that Tibbs could really – this is your next Derrick Rose right here. Um, so that's why I worry about him. Um, I just – I mean, I, I, I don't know if there was much more the Knicks could do. Okay? I didn't think Paul George was the answer. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what much more they could do. I don't think, I think Boston is still the team to beat. I think Miami is a problem. I think the Bucks are a problem. I'm not too much worried about the Sixers because they didn't, you know, just because they got Paul George and they signed Maxi and they have Embiid. Embiid has, is, is not healthy. You know, he's going to always be hurt. Um... And I, I worry about the Pacers. I think the Pacers are coming. Yeah. I think the Pacers are coming. Um, so, I it's it's whatever. It's whatever. I, I think that this missing, losing Isaiah Hardenstein is a kick in the stomach just because he's a good player. I think he's going to the Thunder and he makes them, he makes them better. I don't think the Knicks got tremendously better. Did they get better? They got better because they were able to bring they were able to bring back OG, and they did get Bridges, who's a, who's a fine player. Um, but the net net, I don't know if it's that much higher. That's all. Now, but he, this yeah. team will be in contention. Like maybe the yeah, team, uh, sure. Well, every team is. The fucking six teams make it, and there's a playoff with the. With, with uh, uh, 7 through 10. So, yeah, they'll make it. But they're not that far of a drop-off. This doesn't drop them from 2 to, like, no. No. This, no, this, no. this, may, this may keep them at 2 or drop them to, like, 4, I would say. Yes. Uh, yes. This, I could agree and, with that. Yeah. And, sure. And come trade deadline, come trade time, they'll be targeting center. Right? And who knows who will be available. So there may be somebody who's better like more fiscally responsible than Isaiah Hartenstein. Who I'm And I didn't think they were going to be I didn't think they were going to become a number 1 overnight either. I mean, Boston has all their guys locked up for the next 3 years. So, right. and they just won a championship and they crushed everybody. So, you know, you're not going to get over that hump. I just think there are other teams that are coming. Absolutely. They're coming. They're absolutely coming. But the Knicks didn't they did not lose they're not losing ground. They're not losing ground. And Precious to Chew is a free agent, so they could possibly like re up him too. He gives them height. I mean, he's still going to be in there. Like they're all in that six nine to seven feet tall. They can't teach height at the end of the day. So like there are plenty of guys that they can find on the free agent market, possibly maybe take a better mid level exception. And then like even if you want to add a guy like Bismack Biombo, right? You you sign, they signed a, a Nick. You sign the Thunder. You know, you, you bring yeah. a guy thir- 31 sure. years old, 13-year veteran. He brings you, like, that veteran presence in addition to the game that he puts forth. So, you know, like, it's far from over. For all you grill masters, green thumbers, DIY aficionados, and home repair heroes in the Richmond, Virginia area, If you're looking for personal service quality products and a convenient shopping experience, then look no farther than Thacker Ace Hardware in Colonial Heights. Owner Don Rackley and his team of local experts have everything you need to tackle every project around the house. I'm talking Benjamin Moore paint, Milwaukee and Craftsman power tools, plumbing, electric, hardware, the works. For you green thumbers, their nursery department is top notch, and I wouldn't be me if I didn't mention the grills. 
they have Weber, Blackstone, Big Green Egg, Traeger. I want one of everything. Give them a call today at 804-766-4223 and see how they can assist you. Or swing by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. That's Thacker Ace Hardware, 804-766-4223 or swing by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. Thacker Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. And speaking of far from over, you know, NBA free agency has really just begun. But two notable superstars are on the move already. Clay Thompson is heading to Dallas after a, a sign-in trade, a three-team sign-in trade involving the Hornets and the Warriors. And Paul George is headed to the Sixers. Do either of these make sense to, to you? And uh, like, which is a better fit? Jeez. Uh... I'm happy for Clay. I, I I love his game. I I think he's a tremendous shooter. I'm a Clay Thompson fan. I'm happy to see that he left Golden State. I'm happy to see that he didn't listen to his dad and go to the Lakers. He knows a sinking ship when he sees one. Um, <laughs> wonder how much Bronny played into him saying I'm not going there. Um, I like him going to the Mavericks. I think that's a good fit for him. I think. He's going to be taking a lot of shots that the Mavericks missed in the NBA Finals. So he's going to get his opportunity. The question I have is, is can he get back to being 2016 or 2017 Clay, knowing that all he has to do is shoot? If Clay could shoot 38, 37% from three, man, the Mavericks are going to be very good. Now, when it comes to Paul George, I mean, it's not – Daryl Morey I always felt was ahead of the curve. But it seems like he's just chasing the old big three scam or big three dream. Like Harden didn't win with Embiid and Maxi. What makes you think Paul George is going to win with Embiid and Maxi? Paul George didn't win in Indiana. Paul George didn't win with the Thunder. Paul George didn't win with the Clippers. So what really makes you think that bringing him to Philadelphia at 34 years old is going gonna, is gonna to make this team a champion? I mean, and the thing about it is, is there was nowhere else for Paul George to go. So I don't even know who you were competing with money-wise. Oh, and I forgot... At one time, the Sixers had Jimmy Butler, so I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get why people fall in love with Paul George, PG thirteen playoff P. The best, his best years are behind him. Paul George is a tantalizing player just because he puts up points. That that's really the appeal of a guy like Paul George. He puts up a lot of points. That's great. He averages 20.8, 6.3, and 3.7 for his career. Last year, he averaged 22.6 for the Clippers. You figure, like, that will stay the same, just from the standpoint that he's going to a team where he is the second or third option, right? Because Embiid is still your one, Maxi is most likely your number two, and that leads you Paul George. So he's going to put up buckets. It's everything else that you were concerned about. It's everything else that comes with Paul George. The giving of a nickname and then disappearing. Giving himself that nickname and then disappearing in the playoffs. So it's a, it's a nice joke. It's, it's a great little joke there by Paul George. Like, when you need him most, he ain't there. So I really don't know what the standpoint of Daryl Morey is. Yeah, you need a third guy. I would argue that he's not the right third guy. Yeah. Right? Like, you you had Arden. He wasn't the right third guy. I think the third guy that was right for this mix is actually come and gone yes. from Philly. You mentioned that Jimmy Butler was there already. 
Jimmy Butler would be perfect. He has grit. He has tenacity. He does the things that Embiid doesn't want to do, and Tyrese Maxey is not capable of doing yet. So I think that Jimmy Butler would have been a you know a fine addition now, not a few years ago. Even Harden. I'd rather have Harden than Paul George. Uh, I mean. Harden's a tough case because we've seen the, the best and the worst of James Harden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the playoffs, James Harden is better than Paul George, but I mean, that's such a low bar. So it's one of those things that, you know, you, you kind of have to you kind of have to put the playoffs aside and you're, you're paying him for the fact that he's going to light up the regular season and he is going to be one of the guys that's going to keep the ship steady when Joel Embiid inevitably misses like 30 or 40 games of the season because his back is out or, you know, he flops on the floor floor and busted his wrist or, you know, he tweaks his knee, like something. The Klay Thompson thing is very interesting. I I find the the Klay Thompson thing more interesting from the standpoint that it's a veteran shooter to a team with... A good shooter already. Like he's going to take the pressure off of Luca. He's going to pre- take the pressure off of Tyree. But does that take them up there with the Thunder? Does that take them up there with the Wolf? Does that take them up there with the Nugget? I got to say, they were at five. It probably moves them from five to four. I don't think it moves them from five to two. I don't think it moves them from five to one. Like, it's better. But I can't quantify by how much. You know, the Clippers got worse. The Mavericks got better. They played played each other in the first round in a four or five. There you go. They just swapped places as far as I'm concerned. But... It's 50 mil, two second round picks. Only one of them is from is Dallas's pick because they were, you know, the least favorable of the Denver Philly pick is going to go as part of that trade to the Warriors. So realistically, it only cost them one of their own. I think it's going to give them the much needed shooter. It's going to give them the much needed veteran presence. But at the end of the day, neither one of these deals, in my opinion, neither one of these deals really moved the needle that much. I think we can both agree this is like a one-year, two-year window, right? I mean, I can't see Clay making an impact for the Mavericks in 2026. No. I can't even see Paul George on the on the uh, 76ers in 2026 when he's 36 years old. Yeah, this is them taking their swing. This is them taking their big swing. This is... I, and when you think them, about it, right, the, the Mavericks just are looking for a guy to knock down shots. Mm-hmm. The Eagles are looking for, like, a third superstar, right? right. They're, they're still looking for that big three formula. Daryl Morey's still hung up on that shit. That's, that's, what it looks, that's what this looks like to me, where the Mavericks have identified, okay, yeah, we shot like shit from three. If we had a guy that could hit half of the threes that we missed, holy shit, we might have won two of, two of those games in the finals. So let's go get a guy who can knock down threes. Oh, Clay used to be able to do that. Maybe we can, maybe if we take the load off of him, he might be able to do that again, right? I mean, right. I just I like I like their mindset more than Dallas saying, "Hey, you know what? We need a big three. Let's go try to get Paul George." Hey, you know we really need a big three. Let's try to get Kevin Durant or let's try to get LeBron James and his son. Like, nah, man, they're, they've identified what they are. And they're like, all right, we need a shooter. Well, the funny thing is, is that the, the, the Sixers are like, we need a big three. The Mavericks are like, we just need three. They don't have we to see, big. We just, just need a three. <laughs> I just need We just one. need a three, man. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing is, like, they realize, like, if we get in and we can get hot and knock down some baskets, we can get back to the finals. 
And on the other side, Philly's like, man, we need a guy that's averaging like 25 and 10. <laughs> we need because we know we're gonna lose and beat for like 30 games. So we need someone to team with Maxi who could keep us at 500 while Embiid's out, right? Like that's that's the crazy mindset that Daryl Morey must be thinking, which I, I don't know. Taylor's thinking. I don't know what he's thinking. I used to like him. I used to think he was like, you know, that whole thing with Harden really messed things up. Really good for him. Because yeah. I just don't like I don't like this I don't like this Philly team. They're not gonna beat Boston. I don't know if they're going to beat Milwaukee. No. If you're looking at it, I got to say that they're probably fourth best, maybe fifth, depending on how you feel about the Cavs. Because I got to put the Knicks above them. I got to put the Celtics above them. I have to put the the Bucks above them. And it seems like the Cavs have made their bed, right? They've extended Donovan Mitchell. He's the guy. I think he's getting fifty mil a year for three years, right? Hundred and fifty yeah. mil for three years. Yeah. So I mean, like, this is this is this is who we are. This and then you gonna... you mentioned the Pacers. You mentioned the Pacers already. That's tricky. The Pacers have ascended so much that, you know, I can put them in the argument for fifth best team. I can, I can put them up there with the Sixers. I can argue that the Pacers actually have more depth to them, right? We saw it. So, you know, this just doesn't, it doesn't make anybody better. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't make them better. It just makes them, it, it, it's just going to make them more able to withstand Joel Embiid's inevitable downfall. And it's going to keep them out of the play in the tournament. But, you know, it's a big deal besides the Boston Celtics extending Jason Tatum, making him the richest player in NBA history, and the Celtics shelling out money for Derek White on his four-year $125 million contract. It's a big, it's a big lucrative day in being now. But the majority ownership of the Celtics is for sale. Despite winning the championship, despite having 18 championships on their resume, they're outpacing every NBA team. They've extended their second best player, but nah, they're, they're, they're good. They're good to cash out, man. They're at the, they, this ownership is good to cash out. Mark Cuban sold, and now the Celtics are up for grabs. So let's put on your ownership cap. You own the Celtics. Are you selling right now? Oof. Uh, if I'm looking for a return, a big return on my investment, if I'm done going to basketball games and traveling on the road to basketball games, if I'm looking into the next venture, yeah, I got my ring. Um, the window is still open for this team, so it could be appetizing to someone who's trying to get into the NBA. Um, yeah, I think I'm good. Um, I think, see, there's a lot of questions to be answered, Z, because the, the new TV deal, I think, is two or three years away. Mm -hmm. And that's really going to shape the future of the NBA with streaming and everything. And I, I don't know how these owners feel about gambling. I don't, uh, I mean, look at, look at the contracts that are being signed, Z. Uh, Emmanuel quickly, really? Yeah. OG o, OG Anobi, really? Like these are the contracts we're handing out. These guys are bench players, role players, not superstars. That's a lot. Dallas Cowboys, I think, were purchased for like 150 mil back in 1989, whenever it was. So I think, and you think about Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban's out. Like yeah. Mark Cuban's out. So when Mark Cuban jumps out, that's got to raise a flag to say, hmm, why is Mark Cuban getting out now? This was the guy that, you know, essentially streamed the first thing ever on the Internet. I mean, he's a smart guy. He's savvy, big time businessman. He's getting out. I don't know. I think there's something to be said. I think there's a lot of concern with the direction that sports are going when it comes to gambling, when it comes to these contracts. 
mean, you're really just not going to be able to keep teams together for a long period of time. I mean, look at the money that was shelled out for Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum signed the richest contract in NBA history. I like Jason Tatum. Is he worth the richest contract? I don't think so. In short, at one time, at one time, Aaron Rodgers signed the most lucrative contract for a quarterback. He didn't have as many Super Bowls as Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, or Peyton Manning. But I could understand it, right? You could understand. It's Aaron Rodgers. He can make every throw. He keeps us in every game. I kind of get it. But this one, no, oh, man, I don't see it. And we don't. And we don't also know what what direction the NBA is going. The NBA is in need of a new superstar, right? Right. LeBron's going to be leaving. Kevin Durant's older. Steph Curry's older. Wemba Yama, we don't know what he's going to be. Is he going to be the next guy? There's a lot of question marks. I have a lot of pressure to put on a 20-year-old. There's a lot of question marks, but you're the Boston Celtics. You just won a championship. Your 18th title. You've got all your guys locked up for the next three years. Windows open. Fuck yeah, the team's going on the market. (laughs) I don't blame you. And Wick Grusbeck, that's the owner. He feels the same way. He just got his appraisal from Forbes. $4.7 billion. That's the appraisal of the Boston Celtics by Forbes. Are you going to turn down $4.7 billion? Not I. Not me. No, sir. Absolutely not. Especially since I got my ring. I got my ring. I got it. I've been owner for a couple of years now. I got to travel to every every, uh, arena. I got to see my team beat everybody yeah. i've tasted the champagne i have the trophy i did it and i did it and this, it was what? fun it was great i'm good you just shelled good. out close to 500 million dollars for Derek white jason tatum yeah i want other people to pay that i don't want that coming out of my money no absolutely not if i can avoid cutting those kinds of checks Absolutely, I'm going to avoid cutting those kinds of checks. Just from a practical standpoint, you know, it, and you, you're right. From a competitive standpoint, he got what he was looking for. He I did it. He, it's over. He achieved, if, uh, he achieved what he wanted to do from a competitive standpoint. The Celtics are there. The Celtics are going to be there. And if I was given a check or given the potential of earning close to $5 billion, I'll leave tomorrow. Like, I'll, I'll I'll turn off the keys right now. And that's the other thing is maybe maybe he also, but maybe he's also a realist like me and says, man, we fucking won this year because Embiid was hurt, Antetokounmpo was hurt, the Knicks were hurt. We got it because everybody was hurt. We don't. We're gonna be a year older. Everyone's gonna be a year older next year. We're gonna run this back. Maybe he maybe he was a realist. Maybe he looks at it. He's like shit. Next year ain't going to be as easy as it was this year because it was easy this year. Let's be real. They only lost, yeah. what, two games or three games, right? They they cakewalked it. It ain't going to be this easy next time. Everything broke right completely. Like, you, the only way, the only thing that would have been easier if it was fo fo fo. Like, that was the only, you know, that's the only. Fo fo fo. Exactly. So, that would have been the only thing that would have been easier if they just swept their way through. But a lot of things had to break right. You're absolutely right. But this, and you, you're right. The East is getting better. We talked about how the East is getting better. The West is getting better. The quality of team is good. But then there's also the idea, like, what am, what is the, what is the horizon? What's over the horizon? You know, what's the horizon line there? I'm now paying. Guys like OG Ananobi, who are very good players, not great, very good, this exorbitant amount of money. I just had to pay Derek White this exorbitant amount of money. The Bronny, Derek who? Like, Bronny James just got paid $7.9 million. Like, fuck. I had to pay my second round draft pick that I probably could have gotten for like a ham sandwich. I got to pay him like 20 mil. Like, come the fuck out. He could have paid me. Exactly. He could have paid me to come play here. Exactly. We have we probably have one bad we have probably have one good knee between the two of us to sign that contract. You know we're, we're good, but um, yeah, I mean in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat, sell that team. 
you, you get a check for $4.7 billion or more, you sell that team in a heartbeat and you go, you know, give me lifetime tickets or give me a lifetime box and I'll go like, I'll shave weight, I'll wave my little hand, uh, I'll shake some hands, I'll, uh, I'll dock my cap, I'll come to every home game, like that's it, like, I, I'll, I'll happily do that. You know, I'll smile my little smile and then move on. But, you know, sports, the, the sports landscape in terms of finances is changing. And we're seeing that in college, right? God, that's going to trickle up. I mean, we, we know that it's going to bubble up. We've already seen it kind of bubble up to the pros. It's only going to get worse. The financial bubble eventually is going to burst. And I don't want to be there if I was Bruce Beck. Like, eventually, this is going to be so untenable that they're not, it's not going to be able to, to move forward. And that's just it's being fiscally responsible. But enjoy the run while you can. Try and run it back. And at the same time, like, feel those offers and look at them. Go for it. Why not? When owning a home, it's important to have heating and cooling professional available when things go wrong. Air Care Technicians is a veteran-owned HVAC company servicing the Westchester area. They are licensed to service, repair, maintenance, and replace all HVAC units. If your unit is not running properly or you would like to improve the air quality in your home, contact Air Care Technicians for a free quote. They offer same-day and emergency services for all of your needs. You can reach them at 914-315-1547. Air Care Technicians, 914-315-1547. So in other news, transitioning from the hardwood to the ice, NHL free agency has also been underway. And we have some big names moving around the league. No one bigger than Steven Stamkos, the longtime Lightning captain and Stanley Cup champion, is no longer in Tampa Bay. He's going to Nashville, along with Jonathan Marcia. So along with Brady Shea, they're, they're building a little thing out there in Smashville. They're definitely trying to get over the hump here. <laughs> Lindholm, Zadarov, Tarasenko just signed today. Who's made the biggest move so far? And when are the Rangers going to realize the free agency has started? <laughs> it started. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I'm a Stamkos guy. Like, I love Stamkos. I love that he went to the Predators. Um, I know he's 34 years old, but I think he brings a lot to the table. I think he's going to make an impact there. Um, and I like what the Lightning did, getting Jake Ensel. I, I, 29 years old? Are you kidding me? This is, this is a no-brainer for them. They, they really, they really pick, picked up after Sam Coe's left. And there's one more. Hold on. There's one more that I like. Let me find my notes here. Oh, and the Bruins, Lindholm. Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's big man. Twenty nine years old. This is what they need. This is what that. This is what Boston needed, man. This is this is definitely a big move for them. And I believe, um, don't get me wrong, I think Pittsburgh also got better too. I think Pittsburgh got Aho, didn't they? So I think Pittsburgh got Aho. Oh. Looking at, I mean, they got Grizzlies. They got Anthony Beauvillier. They have, they have a few guys. They got Sebastian Ajo. Yeah. They, they def- yeah. That's but huge. Def- I love that the guy. Defense in Sebastian Ajo. The Islanders Ajo. Not the Hurricanes Ajo. It was the, the other Ajo. <laughs> it was... It- Ajo! What are the odds that are two Sebastian Ajos that both play professional hockey? Well, you know, that is a good move. Like, the, the Pittsburgh Penguins... There's only one There's only one Anthony Lindsay, though. i tell you that there's right now. There's actually two. I have a cousin. <laughs> so, that, that's the funny part. He actually... He just graduated high school. Congratulations, Anthony. So... Hilarious. Oddly enough. So... I guess Reinhardt... Re- Reinhardt re-upping with the Panthers is good for them, too. But those are the teams I like. I really like what the Preds did. I like what the Bruins did. 
Um, P- Pittsburgh made a lot of moves. Uh, you can't be mad at Florida, but yeah, what the fuck, Rangers? What's going on? So they're up there against it. You have Capel right now. All you're able to do is sign Sam Carrick so far. Like that, exactly. Who? It's the highest profile guy. Um, they're locked into the situation with Jacob Truba. They want to move him. He's not inclined to agree to be moved. You know, he's got a six month old kid. His wife is in a medical residency. He's not inclined to agree to this trade. And they're trying to move him. And he's from Michigan. They're trying to move him to Detroit. They're, they're trying to accommodate him to a certain degree. Now, that being said, he has no movement clause. The Rangers have already circumvented a no movement clause with Barclay Goodrow. He said, I don't want to go to San Jose. It's not on my list. Lo and behold, you place him on waivers. Where does he end up? San Jose. So it it kind of tells you a little <laughs> it tells you a little something right there. Like Chris Jury ain't taking shit. He ain't playing games. But that's going to drive a wedge. You know, some players aren't going to like the way he does business if he does business that way. So I can understand that. Um, if you're looking at the Canucks, essentially, they, they brought in Jake DeBrusk, they brought in Danton Heinen, they brought in some players that will kind of make them a little bit deeper, make them a little bit more physical. I think that's going to be helpful to them. Now, but I mentioned uh, Zadarov, but... He's going to the Bruins. You have Lindholm. He's going to the Bruins. They got they got better. The Bruins actually got better, you know? Marsha So, Sam Coast, and Shea, very splashy. Very splashy. It's going to make them better. They become Western Conference contenders right there. They may not. Who's the, that? The Nashville Predators. Nashville. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, the team that is kind of interesting is that you're starting to bring back a lot of their players, and that's the Edmonton Oilers, right? Connor Brown's coming back, Victor Arvidsson signed. That's a, that's a new wrinkle to the team, going to bring them a little bit of depth. But Terry's back, you know, uh, Henrique is back, Yanmark is back. Uh, they're really like running it back with this group. They added Jeff Skinner, so now they have two Skinners. Uh, good for you. Two Skinners is better than one, I suppose. It will make them deeper. Um, and another team that I really like, I really like what the Red Wings are doing. You bring in Vlad Tarasenko on a two-year deal. Didn't they bring back what's his they face brought back too? Patrick Kane. So basically, they reunited with all the ex-Rangers. So when the Rangers couldn't get it done, they brought in, you know, they, they brought in Tyler Mott. They brought in Vlad Tarasenko. They re up. They signed Cam Talbot to a two-year contract. He didn't have. He had an up and down season last year. They're banking on the fact that he's going to be, you know, better than he was. And they signed Eric Gustafson. They took the They took Eric Gustafson off the Rangers' hand. So when there's a critical penalty later in the game that needs to be made. They have a guy, an Eric Gustafson, who will just go a little bit too far. I, I'm kidding, Eric. I'm kidding. You, 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 you what kind of stupid play is that? But, you know, there's plenty to go around here. Like Jonathan Drew and re up. A lot of teams are re upping their guys. So, it's very interesting to see. But the biggest splash with Nashville, it's just, you can't argue it doesn't make them better. You add Steven Stamkos, you got better. You add Jonathan Marsha, so yeah, you got better. 100%. 100%. Now, can they challenge Edmonton? In terms of firepower, I think you can now. I'm not afraid of Edmonton. No. I, who's, who's afraid of Edmonton, honestly? Uh, who's really afraid of I don't of know. I, I can't say that anybody is. In the West, Dallas is still the tip top. Right? They're still top of the league. And they, they brought back Matt Duchesne. They're sticking with him. Like You have Matt Dumba going there. You have, some, you have some quality players there, and you're only going to get better. So 
you have Dallas, you have Colorado's not going anywhere. The West is going to be very interesting. Chicago made some really good moves, bringing in Patrick Maroon, bringing in Alec Martinez, bringing in Bertuzzi, Tara Vinen. The Blackhawks are definitely in the business of protecting their asset in Connor Bedard, and they may be on the cusp of doing great things here. They're building slowly, but then you look at the East, I like the Anthony Duclair signing from the Islanders. I think that that's a good move. They needed more grit and firepower, and the Duke definitely provides that, but I'm disappointed in what the Rangers are doing or not doing, right? Casey Fitzgerald, Sam Karras, it's just not moving the needle. You know, the Devils are making moves. The Islanders are making moves. The Penguins are making moves. They actually made a move with the Rangers. They sent Riley Smith to the Rangers for draft picks. The Bruins are clearly making moves, but the Rangers are not getting better. They need to flush out. They need to flush out the forward situation. They need to kind of make good with their players and get into the PR department here and really, you know, mend some fences. Otherwise, this is very close to spiraling out of control and becoming a shit show. So, as we sit right now, the Rangers are a major loser in free agency so far. But there's still time to turn it around. There's opportunities for Drury. You know, maybe the youth movement is the way to go with guys like Brennan Offman. Maybe that's what's going to happen. They get cheaper. They get younger. We'll see. But they need to solve the grip problem. They need to address the defense. Because, yeah, Laffy's got to get paid. Igor's got to get paid. That situation's not changing. But you don't want to lose the future because the future is bright it's absolutely bright this team was in the Eastern Conference Final we need to remember that and they need to remember that and act like it Florida's losing players you have a chance to gain ground and you're not doing it you're just not doing it wake up and make some moves Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today and check out our releases in apparel, accessories, drinkware, and more. Ever wanted an alleged superstar t-shirt? We got those. You want some yoga pants? We got those too. And we're not done yet. We have a lot of exciting collaborations and new products on the way. But check out what we have now at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ. Who is the best of the worst this week in sports? The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. Alright boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for your Legend Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll on our X account at Fade Route DNZ and our Instagram poll at Fade Route Podcast. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this year's show and takes home the coveted ass trophy. And do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week, Dick? I don't. Narrowly. Edwin Diaz. Narrowly. So... He just beat out Jesse Winkler. Oh, wow. I can't believe Jesse Winkler got beat out. That's nuts. So sticky stuff, narrowly beating it. I'm going to beat the shit out of a 56-year-old man. That's crazy. 56 or 66? Maybe 66. Yeah. It doesn't mean any better. I'm going to kick the fucking ass. Sticky stuff, beat out. I'm going to kick your fucking ass. But 
That was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees? D. Oh, I got first off, I got Chris Paul. After 58 games with the Warriors, they have seen enough of your garbage. Because they are not bringing you back, and you've signed a deal with the Spurs. Chris Paul, we got 12, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 seasons. And one, two, three, four, five, six teams. You're being passed about around more than a blunt. Chris Paul, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, the New York Rangers totally whiffing in free agency, which started earlier this week. It's like, guys, get it together. I know you're in cap hell, but come on, man. Got to put a team together. Got to compete against those Panthers. New York Rangers, you are my alleged superstars of the week. And number three, Jamarcus Russell. The former number one pick was fired as a volunteer assistant coach at his alma mater high school when he allegedly took a $74,000 check that was supposed to be donation to the school. A local business owner wrote Russell the check when he approached him about donating money to the school for a new weight room. Russell then deposited the check to a local Western Union and took $55,000 out for himself. Jamarcus Russell, you are my alleged superstar of the week. What do you got, Z? That Jamarcus Russell story is fucking wild, <laughs> dude. Like, that's almost as good. But when it's you think, but wait, when you think about it, you think if, about? if you're the business owner and Jamarcus Russell is coming to you, asking you for money to donate to his high school, that's got to raise a flag, man. It's just got to raise a flag. You... You can't be signing a check over to this dude. That's fair. I mean, it is... You have to figure... It's a little bit on the... It's a little bit on the businessman. Just but, make that out to Jamarcus. It's Jay <laughs> with the two S's in Russell, man. They changed the name of the high school? Yes. <laughs> yes. No, my best friends call me Cash. I'm just gonna... I'll make it... I will just, match. <laughs> I will match and I will... I will give you the credit for it. I'm totally good for it. That's almost as good as when they they trapped Jamarcus Russell. The Raiders did. Like, oh, with the hundred dollar bill? No, with the DVD, the blank DVD of the plays. <laughs> like, we want you to study these plays. I got you, Coach. They were fantastic plays. Let's use them. It's a blank That's... DVD, son of a bitch. I knew it. Come on, Riverside. But I'm going to start with the Italian men's national team. Ooh, Crashing out of the Euros. After winning a thing we like to call the whole fucking thing. It's an embarrassment. You didn't even make it to the quarterfinals, gentlemen. You lost in group play. You put the as in Azuri. That's no bueno. Italian men's national team. You are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, Marcus Stroman. He was due for an appearance on our countdown here on our alleged superstar. Ground ball to short, Volpe to Strom- Vol- Volpe to Torres to first, not in time. Seemingly innocuous double play ball, runner beats it out, no big deal. Hmm. Stroman proceeds to bitch out Glaber Torres screaming, throw the fucking ball, <laughs> covering his mouth with his glove, showing up Glaber Torres, and, you know, granted, it's Glaber Torres, so it's it's to be expected that, you know, sometimes there's lackadaisical play. He did, it was not lackadaisical play. He just, the, the runner just beat the throw. These things happen in baseball. Don't tell that to Marcus Stroman. But we're not done yet. Aaron Judge proceeds to go talk to Stroman in between innings, saying that that's not what we do. We don't show up our teammates. Doing things that a good captain should. Saying the right things that the captain should say. Stroman, you ready for this? You ready for this? He unfollows him and then blocks him on social media. (laughs) What? Are you in... What? Love Dude, it. how petty are you? 
Never mind that Aaron Judge is like twice your size will break your ass in half if you step through him the wrong way. But you cannot, you cannot be that petty and thin-skinned. Are you kidding me, Marcus? The very definition of do better, just do better. Marcus Stroman, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And then last but not least, Toronto FC. Did you see this? Oh my god, absolutely ridiculous. In the 97th minute, the Maltiare wins the game for Atlanta United against Toronto FC. But that's not the weird part. The weird part is how we did it. The backup keeper, who I'm going to refer as the backup keeper because Sean Johnson is back from U.S. men's national duty. And, frankly, you know, that's all we're going to say about the U.S. men's team right now. But, the backup keeper decides, makes a save. I'm going to put it back into play. Oh, I did see this. I did. Slight problem. (laughs) Holy shit, where'd this guy come from? (laughs) He kept him on side. And he drank his water. He drank from his water he, bottle, he, didn't he? He drank his water. It gave him super... It gave him invisibility power. It gave him, like, invisibility cloak. And he played... The, the keeper plays the ball out. Tiari takes it from him, says, Surprise, motherfucker. And he beats him. <laughs> and then yes. Atlanta walks it off. That's embarrassing. You have, like... You hang it up. That, that's one of those that you hang it up afterwards. Like, you're questioning... You know, whether or not you should be professional. That's pretty damn bad. That's a horrible way to lose if you're Toronto FC. And I'm sure they're thanking their lucky stars that Sean Johnson is back. But then again, maybe not because Orlando just beat them tonight. So, Toronto FC, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we said our piece. Go to our X account at DMZ. Go to our Instagram poll at Podcast and vote. And vote, and vote, and vote, and for our nominee. You're better than that. Just do better. Just do better. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay fade, everyone. Time for us to run the go route. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review, rate us five stars, turn on subscription notifications, and share on social media. Tell your friends and spread the word.